Hi, I'm Frank Martin. Today I want to speak a little bit about Apple Special Audio and especially Dolby Atmos. Uh, you may have seen a couple of uh, videos of uh, audio engineers comparing the uh, new Special Audio format uh, with the original mix, uh, comparing the uh, binaural output, I guess, the uh, two-channel output, uh, compared to the stereo mix and making some comparison. Um, so is Special Audio something uh, different or just uh, uh, different mixing and mastering, uh, uh, wider image, some special feature, a uh, lot of volume. So to get there, we need to understand a little bit more Dolby Atmos. Uh, but first, the intro. <laughs> So I'm a musician, I'm an artist, I do quadraphonic modular synthesizer music here with my modular synthesizer and I've started to be more and more interesting to special music. So I wanted to talk to you about this. So as I say, uh, Apple just launched a special audio, but you have had uh, some other uh, uh, service like uh, Tidal or uh, uh, Amazon Music that have started to do special music. Special music is when there is more than two channels, more than two stereo. So let's see first how Dolby Atmos came in, especially the uh, theatrical version of it, the cinematic version. And in the second part, because it would be a little bit too long, in the second part, I'll talk about the uh, consumer uh, area. So let's go first into uh, the history of uh, Dolby Atmos quickly. So first it started with mono speaker, then you started to have stereo speaker. It's interesting, I'm uh, reading this uh, in nice book, uh, Stereophonica by uh, Garcia Uzunian, which uh, tell about the history of uh, studying uh, audio and especially audio in a special sense. It's really interesting. So it start a little bit around First World War when uh, we didn't have any radar. So people were trying to locate uh, incoming uh, planes uh, using their ears and using uh, objects to enhance uh, the audio and be able to um, uh, to detect where they are coming from and especially if it was cloudy uh, to be able to shoot at them. So that's roughly around the time and then there was some experiment about uh, getting uh, the transportation of an experience like being at a concert into another room into another place uh, recording it. Uh, so it's interesting that uh, between uh, in the 30s, 40s, there were some studies and uh, I guess around the 50s, 60s, then uh, special audio started to uh, get better understood. Um, so we had had the stereo and then came quadraphonic also at the same time. Uh, quadraphonic was uh, for speaker in the space and uh, we had that some uh, system to encode this uh, four channel into two. Uh, because vinyl are only two channels. So there was some uh, system like uh, matrix encoding. In another video, I was talking about a quark, which is a matrix encoder in the QS format. So you may want to uh, to check this one. But at the same time, the quark was coming, then the movies was here, and um, came the standard of 5.1, then later 7.1. So quark was uh, a kind of forgotten. Also quark uh, encoding had had this uh, problem. Uh, you couldn't place a song in the middle with the encoding. There was some uh, uh, correlation and the signal would uh, uh, annihilate itself. Uh, so that's why Quadrophony didn't pick up. No, we solved this problem, but then 5.1 and 7.1 was here. So it's all based on the cinema layout. So in the beginning, you had that one speaker in the front where is a screen, then you started to have a left and right, then the central speaker, then people put it a surround speaker, which was roughly a little bit, you know, uh, behind you. And then side surround speakers, so one on your right, one on your left. And then we started to add some more, more uh, behind, and then one on the ceiling, two on the ceiling. So we came roughly to a format, which is 7.1.2, um, which is about uh, 10 speakers. So we'll see how that is relevant to Atmos. The other way in all this format is all the Speaker, you see that it's a channel base. The sound is coming from a speaker which is well defined in the space. Uh, you've got another uh, method of describing sound, which is an object base. Instead of saying, well, the sound is coming from this speaker, so what it would look like uh, when it comes from this speaker, you can say, well, the sound is coming from this object in the space around you, and 
the sound is coming from this object. So no, uh, you need you can represent that, but you need also to convert this object sound into whatever speaker you've got around you, uh, and whatever speaker could be also just a pair of headset. Um, so object is more interesting because you have got a real speciality of all the object, but you need the computation to be able to convert that. We'll see also a little bit more about this computation. So at most, you know, they'll be decided that they needed to do a kind of um, hybrid system. Uh, why hybrid? Because will you represent as object the sound of every drain drops? Uh, no, so you could have what they call it a bed, so a 7.1. Uh, point two system uh, to represent this kind of environmental sound, and then I've got more particular objects that are moving around uh, that you can describe. So that was the the idea behind Dolby Atmos. So it, there's a kind of a bed, a seven point one point two, so ten channels, and you can have up to hundred twenty eight channels in total. So out of this hundred twenty eight, you've got a bed ten for environmental sound. And then you've got 118 objects that you can move in place. Uh, I think also you can work with 135 objects, but you need to bring it down to 128 uh, in your mix. So uh, you see uh, how it works. So 7.1, so you've got seven channels which are in the horizontal plane. The point one is the um, uh, low frequency or subwoofer um, because um, you can have smaller speaker to put in the space but with smaller speaker you don't have the low frequency uh, well rendered so you place a subwoofer that's a sub two point that's a point one to enhance uh, the sound and the point two is because you have got two speakers on the ceiling uh, to get a real sense of space um, you can have different uh, setup um, and uh, also uh, that could be an array of uh, speakers, so it's not necessarily one speaker, it could be an array of speakers. Uh, so that's how Dolby Atmos has been set up. The advantage also is that, um, you know, it's object-based, uh, it's all over the person, so that's uh, really, um, really interesting of all these things are. And that was for movie. Um, in the movie, you've got very specialized equipment, and I just want to uh, tell you uh, what were the challenge for going to consumer grade, and that will be on part two. So if you have got 128 channel and you do 24 bits at 48 kilohertz, uh, so that you're taking 48,000 samples a second, 128 channel, you need 147 megabits of bandwidth to be able to represent all this audio information. And 148 uh, megabits, until now, that was a really um, uh, quite a lot of bandwidth. Uh, in uh, consumer grade, uh, you know, 100 megabits uh, network are relatively recent. One gig are relatively recent. Uh, so they needed to find a way to compress all that. And this is what I will be exploring in um, uh, the next part. I will also to mention that I did two other video. One which is uh, to describe how to get um, Apple special audio on the Mac, and the other one is. Um, or to produce Dolby Atmos music using Logic Pro. So please check this video and I'll see you in 